Okay, we're back again. I didn't realize that the last one was so long. 40 minutes. Jesus, I can rant. But anyway, this will be a bit more in depth, so maybe it, uh, it should be around the 40 minute mark. And I've got uh, music in the background, so I can't hear myself speak, so I'll probably be talking a lot louder. So let's go. I wanted to show you the bull tools. So let me just get straight in. I'll do the bull tools and the bacon and we're done. So you don't have to spend the whole night <laughs> listening to me rant. So I'll go to my grid tool, I'll turn it on and I'll just stick it up to 64. Draw a box, as you do. Yeah. So, I need to have this pinned, to have this pinned. This is an oversight. It shouldn't be like this. You know what I mean? I should be able to pin this, but I can't. It's not my fault. So, so the, the UI. So we'll pin it. Um, we're done. Bull tools. What is it? It's uh, Yelaz's script. I've asked some permission for this uh, a few months ago. Subtract, union, slice. And this are the modus slice with background mesh. Remove triangulation. I'll show you that in a second. And it will select outside of most edges, edges, blah, blah, blah. See, I'm completely exhausted. <laughs> the music in the background is going to start melting my head. Maybe I should turn it down a little tad. Hold on. So I can at least hear myself think. I need to add uh, um, a tool explanation. This is a bevel. Bevel ask, I call it, as it asks. Only in edge mode. It asks you the bevel size. There's no, you can't change the options here, by the way. You have to do it here. And the roundness level. The first one is the bevel size and the roundness level. I like my macros to be simple. But anyway, without further ado, yeah, let's go to my grid tool, I'll drop that down and we'll do some bull work. Okay, just drag that out um, yeah, about there. That's good enough. I'm gonna. I want that cut out, but I don't want it square. So I want to isolate this. So I want to keep this and isolate this square because I want to bevel this in. I want this round. Invert selection. H. I hide it. Select the outsides, outside edges, bevel, no uh, 0.5, with a roundness of 4, it's a bit small, no 0.9, yeah, still a bit small. Let's go to 1.2, 4, uh, that's better. It's a bit more hard surfacey type. Shift U to unhide. You can see everything selected. I don't, we don't need everything selected. So I'm going to remove this. <coughs> this is our first subtraction. Uh, 
So you can see all this triangulated mess here. Actually, I'm going to increase that size. It's, it's too small for this video. Let's stick it up to three. That's better. Again, on hide. So you can see here, effortlessly I'm working with this. Um, this is why I've added this marker to remove triangulation. It's the same as select diagonal with uh, 45 degrees I've added. So I don't want, you know, you, do, you don't want this. This is a mess. So I click that and there it goes. This works uh, perfectly on bands and stuff like this really nicely on flat surfaces it's a different story you might need to play around with it so backspace get rid of those there you go quick solution okay so that's that's <laughs> Yulaz's uh, bloody subtraction script works like a freaking charm okay so now I'm going to union same shape Again, just a square. And by the way, you can bevel here as well with the radius, so I can't be bothered. <clears throat> Stick it at 90 degrees. I'm going to union this. And I'm not going to bevel it. Because I want this to be like it's a hard surface, welded, joined together type of model and I suggest you do all your cutting and everything first if you can understand what that means cut out your 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 basic shape and then keep cutting and adding until you're happy with it before you do anything else because you can actually get nice little poly models from this. It takes a, a bit of work to get these, to remove these loops. But you can work, you can call this your high poly model and then create a low poly from your high poly. And if you've got any environmental work from a distance, you're not gonna notice any artifacts, but I'll show you, I'll show you now why this is here to help you get rid of uh, any artifacts that are going to be in your normals. It'll uh, decrease them tenfold. They'll still be there, but once you've added a texture on top of them, you'll, you're, no way you're going to notice it. Okay, I'm ranting again. So, I want to join this with this, so it's a simple matter of using the union. And that's one mesh now. I'll go to my cleanup tools. Let's make sure that's clean. Select the the boundaries and bevel it again. What was it? Two before. It's good enough. Again, I will clean it up. As you can see, we're getting issues here. This will definitely come through in your normal map and will show up on your shader if you do not separate these polys from this edge. And you know the old trick copy paste new layer, copy paste, blah 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 and paste it back again and again I've created a macro that does that pretty quickly for you so I'll just go back to normal mode if you're going to reduce this hold on, I'll actually do that now I'll add a hole through this Oops. Oops. 
reduce first. <clears throat> Before you start doing the next part of this uh, little venture, um, I don't want that there. There, I want it going through the middle, so I'll put that at 92. There's 90. I'll just move that. Again, you can always use a grid tool live with this. If you want smaller steps, just decrease the grid, increase the grid. It's dynamic, that's what I like about it. So I'm going to put that uh, right there in the middle. And that's not in the middle. Now it is. Subtract it. Oh, we went really close to the edge there. So I'll scale that in a bit. So if you've got a face like this and you disconnect it, then you can't reduce. You can't go around these edges and reduce it. Yeah, there it has to be one connected face. I'm just gonna double this in. I'm going to use a bevel tool at 1.1 for it's enough. If your cylinder has got more sides, it's going to end up going a lot more cleaner than this. So, you know, this is just an example. And I should have selected both sides. Let me just do that now. I mean, this is uh, what? 24 sides. Increase it to 32, it looks pretty good. Um, bevels 1.2, and this is where the artifacts really start to show through when you put a hole in something like this. This will definitely come out in your textures, okay? So To solve that, that's what this script is for. You can use this script for a lot of things. It's not even a script, it's a macro. And it's pretty dirty, it's like the bevel. It's dirty, but it works. That's my whole mythology with everything. If it's simple and it works, then leave it. Don't reinvent the wheel. Okay, I'll actually put that back to shading. So you can see how horrible that is. Okay, select it. Run the, run the macro. He copies it into a new mesh. Select your original mesh and hit Control V. Done. It's gone. It's not completely gone. So you still got slight artifacts, but that's not going to come through in your normal map. Same thing with here. Go back to original mesh. And the same story with this. And what it does leave you is, uh, you know, you've got one, two, three mesh items, you just select them and delete them. But it's done. This is again the same story. Control V. So come on, guys, look at that. 
hard surface <laughs> modeling. And the only thing you really need to do to get that, um, you know, to create a low poly from that is to start to remove edges. I'm going to leave that one with you. Because you're going to need to know, you know, you could even add a bevel here. But that's, you could remove all these edges. And just leave that as a straight bevel. And it will work. But you can see how simple this is, and the solution of getting rid of the artifacts in the normal maps is a click of it. Yeah, copy, paste, go back. Done. Only you have to clean up after. Yeah, so it's a bit of a quick tutorial on the bull tools I don't think I need to go into any more depth of that it's, it is what it is, turn the wireframe off you can see here the artifacts here, they're not it's clean <clears throat> you get really clean normal maps from this if you do a big the rest is up to you so now we're going to do a big and I've noticed some issues with the baking, I'm not 100% sure that it's got to do with my script. It's doing the baking here, but... It happened tonight, it hasn't happened in days. And then it happened tonight, and it's like, why is this happening? It's intermittent. So make sure you save your work before you do any baking with this. Save it first to save you a lot of hustle. Okay, I'll go back to normal mode and just get rid of all this. See, you can see these. You can see what's connected and what's not connected. <clears throat> so I will draw out a box again. And duplicate it. This is my little poly, little poly box. High poly box. Get rid of the UVs. Yep. Let's just. Uh, I, can go, I can go into my bull tools and use the same if I'm on edge mode you have to be in edge mode to use it I've done that on purpose by the way let's go for two and a value there you go quick clean up Done. That's our high poly. Low poly. I don't like these UVs, you know why. I want the uh, you know I want the shading to go across these edges. Which they won't. Here they won't. They just stop dead. Now here they actually will. Sorry, but here they won't because they're connected. So I'll go to my UV tools and show you how quick this is. <laughs> it's so simple. Delete, uh, delete my UVs and project here. And I'll scale them down a bit. Try doing that with the Motors UV VL tools. So we're done. This is all done logical steps. I've set this up this way, so you're going from left to right. Keep that in mind. You can, there's no jumping in between. It's, it's a process. It goes from left to right. That's it. Uh, game art set. I showed you that before. 
coefficient is for your color ID maps, shade and normal is for your uh, shade and normal is your object space normals. Ambient occlusion alpha and color. For this example, I'm just going to leave it at this. And you can add individual. Curvature for curvature maps adds an occlusion. You should bake it with a um, hey, color ID map. You get the best results with coefficient and not a diffuse. Oops. Here you've got. I'll show you. Um, it's not basic, it's just. Diffuse color. You want this for your curvature map. Don't use diffuse color because you get a better gradient. But anyway, moving quickly on, we've got our high poly in the background and our low poly. I'm going to add a material to the low poly. LP box. Not Good material reference. I'm not going to touch the smoothing angle. Leave it at 40. For now, you can, you know, you've got the vertex normal toolkit. You can do this with edges, smooth, uh, hard, soft edges. I'm not getting into that right now. This is just my bacon tools, quick explanation, and then we're done tonight, folks. <clears throat> okay, so that was your uh, outputs. This won't work in this view. So if you've got your map set up, you can actually choose what you want to watch here without having to do it all through the render window. Render or bake, options there for you to use. So you've got options and that's, it's nice. Let's put it that way. If I'm doing quick uh, walls and stuff, I'm not going to, you know, there's no way I'm going here to, to do simple bakes. There's no point. Detail work, I'll definitely use this. That's why it's there. Okay, so we've got our outputs. Bake. This doesn't work in the modeling view. This, the rest does. So set your render size as the render size of your alpha map, final color or any of the other diffuse coefficient ambient occlusion maps. Keep that in mind so whatever size you choose here you have to choose the same size for your normal map. This is why this is first. So I'm going to use a 2k. I'm going to add normal map to my low poly material. I'll change it to a TIFF 16 bit. Modo has automatic dithering, it's just as good as Photoshop. No difference. Make sure you bake in 16 bit and dither down to 8 bit via Modo. You don't need the extra step of Photoshop, which is good news. So I'm going to call this box normals 16 bit TIFF color space uh, none you might have an issue with this if you get issues with um, Your normal maps not being correct, you know they're linear or they've got uh, RGB, RG what is sRGB? Then go to your color management, change eight bit color space linear. This is for game art, right? Remember, <laughs> this is not for doing texture and work in Modo. I will never use Modo for painting. I've got uh, 3D coat and substance or. Uh, um, Pixel suit. Also, we've got Substance uh, Painter, which I never use anymore. 
but that's my preference. I keep it at this. It it bit color space linear. It it just works this way. Adding a, an image and setting it to none doesn't work. This bug was uh, posted, the I think, in the first version of Modu 10, and they haven't done anything about it because it's still the same. As long as those settings are in place. If you've got here sRGB, doesn't matter what you change, sorry, it just doesn't work. So we've got uh, to recap, you've got your render size for our render outputs. You've got your normal map, you've already set it physically, what size you want. Now you want a cage for this. So you make sure you've got your low poly selected. Add your cage file, you're done. There it is. And you want to, of course, constrict your bake to your cage file. So add cage rule, view. Push cage. Stick it up to two. It's enough. So you can see the logical steps here. It's like A, B, C, D, E. Now I want uh, padding around my UVs. 64 is enough for this type of bake. You can drop it down. It doesn't have to be 64. Sometimes you need to go up to maximum. It's just 100%. And that's it. <laughs> How easy can it be? That's all you have to do. That's a, that's a bake with my core UI. This button is, bakes all your maps. Every map you've got active here. Now I'm just going to deactivate the final color. I don't know, there's no point for this um, quick tutorial. I'll just keep the alpha map because if you don't have a I think if you don't have an alpha map I put active, then you don't get padding around your uh, maps. I'm not hundred percent sure anymore because my head is so fucked up with the last two and a half months of working with this freaking UI that I've forgotten all the little tricks and things. But I think if you don't have an alpha I put, then you don't get padding. Anyway, 64. Bake for Engine UE4 works, has been working perfectly for the last few days. Tonight I did a bake and boom, got a crash. Bake for Unity, Source, and the older version of Unity, I do not know. I, I just don't know if these work the way they should work. So you've got that option to bake all maps, and you've got this option bakes only your normals. So it excludes the alpha any render output you've got here. It excludes it. So if you just want to do normal map tests, use the big normal only. But anyway, we're going to do the alpha and the rest. Let's go. Immediately, you'll see it's asking it's asking you for a cage or not or distance. We've got a cage, so we want our alpha and any other maps that are here to use the cage. I recommend you use it for ambient occlusion if you're baking one mesh down. It might cause problems if you've got different parts of a mesh. But that's a different story for a different day. Cage. It's going to bake and it's now expanding the border. Now he's asking you again to big texture from object. This is your normal map, so don't get confused. And if again, if cage isn't selected, select it. Now it's going to be a normal map. So this nine out of ten times works. I've had some. I think it's possibly to do with ambient occlusion. It's causing some weird. Crisis with Modo, and we'll, I'll get to the bottom of it definitely because I'm going to be doing a lot of baking lately. Lately, I'm going to be doing a lot of baking lately. Like I stepped into a fucking time machine and my English 
just went into reverse. Okay, so <laughs> so if you've got your, you'll have your normals will be separate. You'll have an alpha there because there's an alpha added to your normal map, but they are separate, and they are actually linear. But if you're not using color management set to linear, it doesn't matter what you set your um, normal map image at the beginning. If you set it to none or linear, you're still going to get sRGB, which is a, it's still there that fucking bug. So that's what it looks like. Here you'll have all your outputs. People will say, yeah, but you know you can do this with the you know the big wizard, right? Go for it. Have fun with the big wizard. Enjoy it. Enjoy. Uh, the simplicity of it, if you find it simple, because I find it horrible. I can't work with it. This bacon wizard is just fucking mind boggling nonsense, in my opinion, compared to what I've just shown you. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps. That's it. You save them out. To whatever image file you want with whatever tag you want so I'm just going to see about this uh, normal map make sure your normal selected I'm going to save it out as let's leave it a target that's 8 bit by the way so this is now being dithered box normals 8 bit dithered Automatically done, yeah. So I've got, the, and I haven't triangulated anything, by the way. So you know the score when it comes to triangulation. You can you can set that up in your FBX to triangulate on the way out, but you should triangulate before you bake. The triangulation locks your your normals in place. Once you triangulate a mesh. And then bake your normals down on that mesh. It doesn't matter what program you bring it into, it's going to be locked. That's it. Can't be changed. But it's destructive. That's the, the drawback. So I. I you know, if I go down to FBX, uh, you've got, where is it? It should be here, or is it latest? Ah. Or is it only in the um, bake export options here? Where is triangulate mesh? What the fuck? Anyway, I'm not going to rant on about this. It's, it's there. It's there. It's there somewhere. Okay, so now you've, we've baked our maps. We're done. And now I'm going to export this. I'm not going to go into any funky export shit. I'm just going to go here. Uh, F FBX. This is Farfeather's FBX. So love it. Works. Works is the way it should. Uh, desktop. I'll go to dev. Core. Here. Done. Let's export it. So we'll open more with it. As you do, I hate these scenes. I gotta set, I have to set up my scenes properly. Grace Cathedral just gives me some sort of inner peace. Import. There it is. LP box. Big thanks to Farfather for this. Uh, my opinion, he should be a um, permanent member of stuff. The guy should be definitely taken on permanently. <laughs> this should be his. This should be his job. But anyway, I'm ranting again, so I will add the. Did I save the normal sir? I didn't even save it out. I save the image. 
Oh, I did. Box known as CGI. Okay. Little bit of an issue there. They have to be flipped. There you go. You see the dithering? When you add a texture to that, you won't even notice it. So there you go, folks. Uh, come on. You tell me which is fastest. Still don't like this or some weirdness going on at the top there, but that's a story for another day. Uh, metalness, turn down metalness. Not bad. So come off it. People who say they can't use Moto for bacon. I just showed you. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Way of doing it. I showed you how to do a quick hard surface work, which you can actually reduce. Polygons you can reduce and then triangulate. And I'm going to quickly go through light maps. But I'm going to need a drink for that. So if you got any got any problems or if you've got any ideas this is all you know I could do updates I won't be updating the, the actual layouts you know what I mean they they are what they are they're gonna they're gonna stay this way you can see it, you, you, people hate this you know they, this drawing is uh, I think it's people who don't have time or something. I don't know. But I, that's just why I love this viewport, right? The modeling viewport. Where you can do everything. But the. Um, <laughs> completely forgotten what I was going to say. Oh, yeah. Light mumps. Or actually, it was the, the tools. Form editor. All these tools you can add and you can remove. I removed actually the game. What do you call it? Game navigation because it's shit. <laughs> There's just no other way to describe it. It's shit. It doesn't. It's just bleh, horrible. And anyway, you can do it. If I've got to be a sixteen. I don't need to walk through it. If you're doing real look dev stuff in Modo, which uh, I wish you success with that. If you're doing look dev for game design in Modo, um, I don't see what possibly uh, you know, could be better than just using the normal navigation tools. Let's just do an example, why not? Okay, here's same thing. You can go big screen. Let's go to game navigation. See, it's just immediately it's horrible. It's jumpy and it's horrible. You speed it up. I don't, I don't see the point of this. Exit. I don't see what what the difference between that is and and. <laughs> this is this is more fluid but anyway <laughs> yeah, that's my uh, own personal opinion okay light maps I recommend you do it here in the big UV screen
Let's say I want a 64 by 64 light mount for this, for these UVs. I'm going to turn off this. I would like to see my UVs. Yeah. So let's get rid of this. I don't need to see what's going on there. Pretty grid setup. And you'll see spacing U and spacing V, and you'll see your fixed grid snap. You change that, you'll see a drop. Yeah. But it won't affect your UV grid. But it actually does when it comes to snapping and moving shit. So I'll close that. So to do a normal um, 64 by 64 grid, you just oh, hold on. Close this. Close this. It's one divided by 64 copy it three times there you go kaboom make sure you've got snap enough oops <laughs> Turn that off and turn the UV so. That is an actual 64 by 64 grid. And if you're doing a light map, you want uh, 2, so you want 62 by 62. And I've tried this with actual physical geometry, so that I'm not bullshitting here. If I type in 62 divided by an hour. Hold on a second. Sorry. One. One divided by 62. Just copy that. Paste it. Paste it. There you go. That's a. That's a. a six. That's a light map. 62 by 62 light map with compensation. It's already built in. So you, build, you make a model and set your UVs right along that edge and give at least maybe one or two. I would give two. Show you. So with snapping, if you if you press X, you've got snapping. Make sure snapping is off. It, it just works better. You do have to zoom in. See, it's not... Hold on, do I go to my... <laughs> this is where it's going to make an arse out of me for light mumps. So we have light mumps. It's one divided by 62. Fix has to be on or this won't work. And again, I had this working perfectly, but. Snapping at all. And maybe there's something on.
Yeah. Need to turn the vert off and keep snapping on. And it works. It's always something. There's always something to remember. And now it doesn't. And now it does. So you do have to zoom in. But that is uh, factually, there's no bullshit, that is an actual edge, that is a pixel. It's just that you do have to zoom in to get that correct. Those calculations are actually correct. You just have to turn off vert. Or maybe grid, was it? Turn off grid and turn on bit vertex. Let's just try that out. This is live testing, folks. Brilliant. No. He's not going to do it with vertex on if it turns snapping off. Nope. So, snapping on. Grid, vertex off. Yep. And if I turn the snapping off, yep. So you can turn the snapping off. Make sure vert is uh, deselected. No, you still have to zoom in. There's no uh, other way around it, and that's for everything. So if I, you know, if I want a bigger, bigger grid, I one divided by uh, two fifty six. Let Moodle do the math. There you go. Just bang on that edge, and that's what you want. And for grid uh, 256, you want uh, you want at least four pixels. I would suggest that that is four pixels. So you can see what I mean. It's, it works. You know, may it works probably works a lot better. But now you can do um, light light maps in Modo with a simple calculation here. Let's say one divided by five twelve. Just fill in those three and you're done. Remove this. See? It's bang on. And the note about light maps, uh, if you're going to put two squares together <laughs> with this face connected, you're still going to get a little bit of um, bleeding. So you best just, you know, if you're putting two modular parts together, just make sure they're. You get less trouble if it's open like this. If it's closed, you can do it. I'm not saying you can't do it, but you're going to get slight artifacts. With the texture on top of it, you won't even notice. So that's, uh, yeah, basically it. I, I can't really see the point in ranting on for much longer. <laughs> You've seen how quick this is. It works. And I wish you many modio, modio happy modeling sessions. And I'm actually a little bit pissed. I think you can hear it. So guys, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Download it. Have fun. If you do like it, you know, you can always just fucking delete it. <laughs> and go back to modeling. If you're 
into a torture type of scenario. Maybe you're a perverted modelers or something. But core will definitely help you. It'll make things more streamlined. You've got more space. Everything functions the same. You don't need to bake wizard. The drawback is you have to export things manually, save out files manually. But if that's a big problem for you, then be my guest. Use the the baking tools because I can't. I can't. I don't even know where to start with this, and I don't want to even start with it. Exports, yeah. Nice idea, but again, this kills it. And that's a wrap, guys. I'll dump the upload tomorrow. Update, sorry. I've got a few things I want to just add to. And the rest is basically up to you. You you should get used to the form editor. So make sure you you know at least add hotkeys and delete the things you're not gonna use. You know, if you know you're not gonna use any of these, delete them out of the mesh edit form and the, the primitives form. Just get rid of them. It's gonna make the system run better. Sadly, there's nothing I can do about the UV tools, I'll show you that. When they're all open, it, the jitter is just insane. But when you're UV and you're not running around, you know, you're not, it's not important, in my opinion. But it's all there in front of you. A uh, quick uh, note on, I uh, should do that before I go. No point one, no point one, and eight. Remember, if you change uh, grid fix snap, then it's going to change your grid tool. Fix increment. So remember to change that back. So if I uh, rescale this, that's my. This is the ratio. That's my ratio for the rest. Yeah, that's the first selected and resized poly. Done. Very handy when you're working with. Uh, I would not use this for pixel density. This is just for basic uh, keeping things in uniform. You've got the far further script splitting UVs, show distortion, turn it on and off, straight UVs. Select a vertical or horizontal, run the script, select a horizontal vertical, run it again. Friends, that's a wrap. That was uh, Core UI, two videos. Have fun. Thanks for watching. Good luck.